Hello everyone, Dusty from Discovery Lab in Tulsa, Oklahoma for Discover at Home, a series of experiments, activities, and projects that can be done at your own home with a parent or caregiver. Today we're going to continue celebrating Earth Sciences Week, and I'll be talking to you guys a little bit about geysers. I'm also going to show you a way to create your own simulated geyser. Now, this is one that definitely, definitely requires adult supervision. Do not attempt this experiment without a trained and responsible adult nearby to help you guys. I'm going to show you how to make a geyser using these materials. I've got a hot plate. I have a ring stand. I've got some tubing with two flask caps. These are rubber guys that you guys can see. I can put that in right there and they hold and plug it in really tight. I have got a bottle that I've cut the bottom off of, so it's kind of like a funnel. I have a glass flask. Now you notice my stoppers fit perfectly in this flask and this bottle because I want a good water and airtight seal. And I'm also going to need some water. And then I'm going to be using some dye, red and blue, so we can see the differences in temperatures of our geyser. Now before I get started, I have a question for you guys. How many of y'all have actually seen a geyser? What even is a geyser? How does a geyser work? Well, if you've ever been to Yellowstone, you might have seen a geyser. Or if you've traveled to hundreds of other locations around the world, it's possible you've seen a geyser. Old Faithful is probably the most well-known example here in the United States. A geyser happens whenever a body of water that is stored underneath, that is near a magma chamber, gets hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually that water boils up and erupts out. Water then seeps back into the chamber, waiting to be heated up again until it erupts another time. So, let me show you how we're going to create our simulated geyser. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our area. You can see that I have got a good station right here. I have got a hot plate. I've got my ring stand right next to it. I've cleared the area of anything that might be flammable. I'm going to be extra, extra careful whenever I'm touching things. I definitely don't want to touch anything with my bare hands. So one thing that we're going to do to make certain that we're good and safe is I'm going to get my gloves on. Whenever we're dealing with anything that's overly hot or overly cold, temperatures outside of our normal body range, we want to protect ourselves. We could burn ourselves or cause frostbite if we touch things that are too hot or too cold. So always, always, always make certain that we have some protection whenever we're dealing with hot and cold items. Now let's set up using our ring, ring stand and our hot plate. So I'm going to put my ring stand pretty high up above my hot plate and I can adjust it later. Now if you see, this is really just kind of a piece of metal with this long pole sticking up and then it's got a ring that I can move up and down. This lets me put things in or around it or on top of it and then I can move it so it's a different distance away from my hot plate. I want it to be pretty far away because real geysers are pretty, pretty far away from that magma underneath the earth. So have you guys ever heard that word before? Magma? Hmm, what does it mean? I bet some of you know. You might have heard of lava. Magma is what we, call, what we call lava when it's underneath the earth. Before it comes out, when it's still just bubbling underneath the surface, it's magma. When it comes out, we call it lava. That's the difference between the two. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this guy almost completely full of water. This smaller flask right here. Get it pretty close to full. Then I'm going to put a few drops of red. So, I don't know about you guys, whenever I see red, that just makes me think hot. So this is going to be our hot water that's going to start off at the bottom. Remember how I said it gets hotter, then it bubbles up? That's what's going to happen with our hot plate. As it heats up, that water is going to get so much thermal energy absorbed, it's going to want to bubble and boil and rise up and expand. Because whenever things get hotter, they tend to expand or spread out because they get more energy this is an example of it absorbing heat energy and then turning to gas. So we're having a state change. We're changing between liquid to gas. All right, now let's set up the rest of it. I'm going to insert one end to this guy, and then I'm going to set him down on my ring mold at the very, very top. And then I'm going to put the other end 
in here. Now, I want to make certain I have a really good seal. I don't want anything leaking out. Because this is pretty hot, that wouldn't be good to have things leaking out. Now, if I need to, I can kind of shift things over and adjust it. What I want is I want this guy to spurt pretty much straight up. I don't want it kind of going to the left or the right. I really want to get a good geyser shooting up in the air, just like Old Faithful. All right. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cold water at the top. So I'm going to put just a little bit of water here around it, just enough that it doesn't quite start to go in my tube. You guys can see I've just barely got enough, and that's going to be my cold water. So I'm going to put a drop of blue down the side. So this is my cold water up top, and my hot water down below. Now, I'm going to start heating it up. I'm going to turn on my hot pad. So this guy is going to start heating up this water underneath. So remember, like I said, this is like a magma chamber. So this is really close where there's a lot of volcanic activity or it's very close to a, um, a hole, kind of a rift in the earth where we can really get down below the crust, where we can get down towards our mantle, which is that liquid, molten, lava, magma-filled area that's just below the surface. So what's going to happen is as this plate heats up, it's going to make this water get even hotter. Now, how many of you guys have ever made water for pasta or rice or anything like that, making some mac and cheese? Have you ever done that before? So you might have seen, if you put the lid on it, what happens to that lid? Does it stay on nice and tight? Or just start kind of bubbling and boiling over? Yeah, sometimes you get that bubbling and boiling over. That's because the pressure has increased so much inside that pot that that lid can't hold it on, and it's just kind of trying to push its way out. What you're seeing is an example of that water being converted from liquid to gas, and you're seeing that increase in pressure. This thing they're going to see here. Now, this one is an experiment that you kind of have to dial in a little bit because we definitely don't want it to get so hot that it spews all over the place, but we don't want it to be too cold. Otherwise, it wouldn't work at all. There's a very, very delicate balance between the hot magma chamber and the cold water that trickles down. That's why geysers like Old Faithful have a pretty regular eruption schedule. You could almost set your watch to it. It erupts so consistently. That's because it takes a very specific amount of time for that water to go all the way back down, reach heat, and then go back up. So, if you guys can see, I'm starting to get some steam right here. My water's starting to heat up a little bit. I'm getting a good amount of condensation right there on the edge where we're starting to see a lot of it. I can kind of smell that smell, you know, when you turn something on. So let's go ahead and watch this for a few minutes. All right, guys, so now what we can see is we can start to see that our red, warm water is starting to creep up our tube right here. You also might notice little bubbles starting to form at the bottom. So remember, what's happening is as we get more and more energy inside this water, that water is going to want to start to expand, spread out. So normally, the molecules of water are fairly close together. The more energy we get them, the more they want to kind of spread out and get themselves more room because they're bouncing all over the place. And so we're almost got a little simmer going on here. You might notice some few bubbles coming up. One way you can really see it is you can see this tube right here. You can see it's expanding, getting higher and higher up this tube as it goes up and up and up. So we just need to build up enough pressure. Now, remember, like I said, it's different for each geyser. Some of them might erupt several times a day. Some might only erupt every year or so. It just depends on its ability to absorb enough energy and get enough pressure to pop that water out. So ours has been going for a few minutes. So maybe not quite at the same level as Old Faithful, but that's all right. We'll get it dialed in here in a second. We're just gonna keep watching as it rises up this tube, see how we're getting more and more of it going up the tube. More and more, when oh, there's a good big bubble going up right there. But you can see more and more bubbles rising in our hot water right here. And we can see this red warm water is making its way up, up, up our tube. Oh yeah, it's going more and more and more. 
Oh yeah, look at these bubbles. So you notice those bubbles rising right there? Remember, that is that water converting from a liquid state to a gaseous state. Whenever things get warmer, they reach what's called the boiling point. For water, it's about 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. So whenever you make your pasta water, you have to get it at least that hot to get it to start boiling, to really get it to start turning around and bubbling up and get hot enough to make your rice or your noodles nice and soft to eat. Oh, there we go right there. Getting more and more bubbles rising up there. We're getting it all the way up here. We're getting more and more movement right here. Oh, now it's starting to get really, really active. We've reached kind of what I'd call a low simmer right here. It's just right before it starts boiling and bubbling up. There we go. We're seeing a lot more energy, a lot more motion right there. Getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Oh, man, look at how much activity we're getting right here. And so, just like I said, for a real geyser, this would depend on how much water was stored, how hot it was, how close it was to the magma. If it was far away from a magma chamber, it might not absorb enough heat. Ours is literally right on top of our magma chamber, so it's able to absorb a lot of heat. Uh, how long it is, the tube, the, the little area that goes up before it reaches the geyser, uh, anything else that might kind of lower pressure, if it goes to two or three different little holes, or if this is, this is full of holes, it would just kind of spew out the pressure. We'd be able to build up nice and high and get it to go all the way out. All right, there we go. Oh, look at it now. Look at how active we're getting right there. We're really filling it up. Oh, man. You can see it's reached this cooler water right here. We're getting kind of a mixture of that red and that blue. Okay, we're getting it almost up. Look, we're rising up. Oh, man, we're almost going to get it to shoot out. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. It's coming up right there. So we had that little burble right here. You notice how it's filling up. There we go. We're going to get a spew. Oh, almost. Now, you can see what's happening is... We got it to where it cooled down enough. So it's cooled down so much that that colder water pushed it back down and then made purple right here. So you can see where hot water and cold water is mixing and then it gets enough pressure that it burbles up and it shoots up. And then it gets cool enough that that cool water can rush back down and then it gets enough pressure built up that that's gonna shoot back up. And we have that burbling up right here. And then eventually we'll get to a time where it'll be so cool, it'll push it down right there. And just go back and forth like that. All right, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So you guys can see how this little cycle of it. It gets so hot, it gets enough pressure, it shoots up. And then it cools down enough that this cool water truck goes down here to fill it back up. But then it gets hot again and we get enough pressure that pushes it back up. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna help our cold water a little bit more by giving it a touch more water. We're gonna see if we can't get it to get a good amount going down there. Get a good pressure right there. I'm trying to help my cold water out, see if I can make it build up a little bit more pressure, see if we can get it to really spew out. Almost. Oh man. So that's pretty cool right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this off just to make certain that I don't accidentally touch it and hurt myself. Because now we've seen that cycle of it heating up and cooling down and spewing out. So I'm going to turn this guy all the way to off. Just to make certain I don't hurt myself. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move my water off of this hot plate so it will cool down a bit faster. You guys can see if I move it away from this hot plate, because this hot plate still has a lot of energy, you can see it's going to cool down even faster. So as it cools down even more, all that cool water starts pushing its way back in. You can see how this cool water is gonna come all the way back in until then, it starts refilling this, and then we have another shot right there. Oh, I thought we'd get enough right there. But now you can see, we have seen that cold water completely return to this chamber and then shoot back up. Now, if this guy was still hot, we'd get that back and forth again. But I think that's enough for you guys to see how a geyser works. Hopefully you guys will get to see one of these in real life. They're way cooler than this in real life. I hope you guys learned a little bit about how geysers work. Do you guys remember the difference between magma and lava that I talked about? What was the difference between magma and lava? Ah, lava is when it's above ground. Magma is when it's below ground. Nice. So cool you guys remember that. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Hopefully you guys had fun watching this experiment. Hopefully you guys enjoyed learning at home. 
I've been Dusty, and thanks so much for hanging out. We'll see you guys next time.